Hello students. In this lesson, we're going to use integration by parts to evaluate this integral. And you're going to see that as you proceed with parts, and you might already suspect this because you know that if you differentiate e to dx and sine of dx, that they're never going to go away, or if you integrate them, they're never going to get down to zero, that this uh, integration is going to start to repeat itself. And I'll show you a technique for um, solving this integration. Um, it's actually just an algebra step as it turns out. So um, we get to choose, do we want u to be e to dx or do we want u to be sine of x? In other words, do we want to differentiate e to dx or do we want to differentiate sine of x? In this example, I choose to differentiate sine of x. You'll get the same exact answer at the end that I will if you go the other way and you differentiate e to dx and choose to integrate sine of x in the technique of integration by parts. So let's proceed. So I'm going to differentiate sine of x and I'm going to anti-differentiate e to dx. And if I set up a tabular method, it'll look like um, this table here. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. So, um, and the antiderivative of e to dx is e to dx. So uv is e to dx sine x. So you see that's what we get here with our tabular method, e to dx sine x. And then we get um, a minus from the formula for the technique of integration by parts. And we get e to dx cosine x. So we'll have to integrate e to dx cosine x. So when you do the tabular method, sometimes you write, you know, you keep working down a diagonal. Remember, if you stop here, you just work across then. You look across and you just follow whatever the signs are that, that uh, are dictated by the table. And here we, these uh, cosine x and e to dx have positive signs in front of them, so we will take this minus sign and we'll put that there. And now we're going to integrate this. So that means we still have to integrate. Okay, so now you see that, well, you're going to have to do integration by parts again. So this part of the integral is done, e to dx sine x. So I'll just highlight that in black, and there's this minus sign parked outside. Now if I do integrate, now ignoring this minus sign here, right, that's, that's down here, I'm going to do perform integration by parts again on e to dx cosine of x. So if I do that, I'll let u be cosine x. So du is minus sine x. So here's cosine x. Here's the minus sine x. And then the antiderivative of e to dx is e to dx. So uv is e to dx cosine x. And vdu is e to dx minus sine x. And then the integration by parts formula has a minus sign in there. Here's where the signs in this what I'm doing here are going to deviate from the tabular method, but the, the tabular method will catch up. Anyhow, if you watch this, you're going to see that if you do the tabular method, you're going to get, um, if you differentiate the cosine, you're going to get a minus sign, and if you integrate the e to dx, you get an e dx, and if you follow the signs down, you'll have a positive, you'll have a negative, and then again, we're going to stop here, and so we have to work across, so we have a minus sine x, a positive sign and an e to dx, so that's going to give us a negative. Now, these signs will match up in a moment. I'll show you that in the next step. All right, so if I distribute the minus sign or the minus 1 through this integral, I'll get a minus e to dx cosine x. So that's a minus e to dx cosine x, as promised. So the positive e to dx cosine x, a minus e to dx cosine x, I might have said e to the x cosine x. It's e to the x sine x in the first term, positive e to the x sine x, a minus e to the x cosine x. And then, since this is a negative sine x and this is a um, positive e to the x, this minus sign is from this product here. So you have to follow. That's why I drew this little curve here. So minus sine x multiplied by e to the x, and that's positive, and this e to the x is positive there then we're going to get a minus integral, since we're working across, e to dx sine x. So the signs do match up, no matter how you do the method. And now we have e to dx sine x in the integrand here and e to dx sine x in the integrand here. But ah, notice that you have a difference in signs here. So we can add this term to both sides of the equation. And we'll get two of these integrals. It's equal to all this stuff here. And then we'll add our arbitrary constant. I'll call it C1. 
arbitrary is arbitrary, so it ultimately doesn't matter. So I'm going to divide by 2 to get rid of the 2 here on the left-hand side. And that means I'm multiplying the right-hand side by 1 half. So now that C1 becomes C1 over 2, which is still, you know, half of arbitrary is still arbitrary, so it's still just a plus C. And this is your integral, or the antiderivative. Here's the antiderivative part, and then the plus C, that's the um, answer to the problem. So I'll just box that in. And uh, you can check your work. So we can check our answer by differentiating. So the 1 half e to the x sine x, I'll differentiate that up here. And so you just use the product rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x sine x left alone plus the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. And then you differentiate the minus 1 half e to the x cosine x. You do that here and you get e to the x cosine x plus e to the x. And then the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, so you get a minus sign there. Then you distribute the minus one, you distribute the one half into the top, distribute the minus one half into the bottom part, so that flips these signs here. And then the cosines cancel, and one half e to the x sine x plus one half e to the x sine x is e to the x sine x, and you get the nth grand back again. So that works. All right, good luck.